Hi guys, it's John here, and this is a look at the GameSir G8 Galileo Type-C controller. So this is the current latest controller from GameSir, and as you can see, it's slightly different to what we've seen in the past with the X2 controllers. And this is going to set you back around £80 or about $100. So on the back of the box, you can see some details of the controller. We can see we've got mappable buttons on the back. We've now got Hall Effect Analog Triggers and Analog Sticks. We've got our pass-through charging and a 3.5mm headphone jack. And we've got some new ergonomics on the design. So what are you getting that's so different to the previous generation controllers? Let's open it up and have a look inside. So inside you're greeted with this measure what can be measured and make measurable what extends beyond no idea what that means but let's have a look in the package so here it's quite a nice layout here that we've got we've got a little box here of instructions and stickers we have the controller itself and it's interchangeable thumbsticks so like i said in the box you get some stickers you get a little thank you message here and a link to download the app and you get the instructions as well i will quickly go through the english instructions here and you can pause if you want to have a look and see any of the information. Okay, so here is the controller out of the box and you can see this is a telescopic controller. It can go from 4.33 inches to 7.28 inches. So the question is, can your phone fit in this with a case on? Now, the answer is probably gonna be no but we're gonna test this anyway. This can support some phones with a case. We can see straight away, there's not enough length for it to actually reach the USB port, so that's not gonna work. Now, this does work if you have very, very thin cases. So here's an example. We've got my old S9 here, which is a bit beaten and battered, but with this tiny thin case, this sort of jelly case here, very, very thin indeed, and we do actually get a connection. So you can see the connection light is on there, so that is working fine. So yeah, it's gonna be a bit hit or miss. I'd say the majority of the time you're gonna to have to take the phone out of your case. So let's just have a quick look around the controller itself and we'll see what we get here. So you can see here, it's a very nice ergonomic design. So this has a sort of design similar to an Xbox One controller where you have that grip at the back. We have our nice analog triggers on the back here, nice bumper buttons. And the face buttons do feel very nice. I wouldn't say they feel the same as an Xbox controller, they feel a bit more solid and it gives some good feedback really when you press them, so that's quite nice. We have our nice analog sticks here, which again, the Hall effect means they're gonna be very accurate and they're not going to have any stick drift issues. D-pad also is nice and clicky. Perhaps not as nice as the Xbox One version, but it is nice nonetheless. We have our back and our start button. We have our screenshot and mode button. And we have our home button here in the bottom right. Now on the bottom of the controller, we have a USB-C charging port and a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. So that's a really nice addition here. And on the back, we have our mappable R4 and L4 buttons. So that is the controller. And yeah, it just feels really nice. Like I say, it's like holding an Xbox One controller, but obviously slightly wider in your hand. It's a really nice layout and it feels nice and grippy as well. Let's go over the magnetic analog sticks here because these plates come off the front. You simply pull away from the top here and they pop off. And now you have the option to interchange your analog sticks with different versions. So these are the ones that come pre-installed, just your standard typical Xbox style controller. And you can see the length of the stick here can be adjusted to be made taller if you use one of these ones. You can change one of them to be like a Nintendo Switch controller, or if you need some extra grip on your analog stick, you can have this one here, which has that extra grip. So here we can get a closer look at these Hall Effect analog sticks. And I had to have a look at what Hall Effect is. Basically it uses electromagnetic field for the movement. So when you move this, there's a magnet underneath and that distorts the field and the accuracy is meant to be extremely good. And of course it means no plasticky moving parts, which are prone to breaking and drifting and you should hopefully have an accurate controller for the life of the controller. So once you're happy with your stick, you just pop it back on. I'm gonna keep with the shorter ones here and the plates just pop back on and you are good to go. So what if we compare this to the X2 controller? You can see I've had this for quite a while. It's a bit beaten up, it still works absolutely fine and it still feels nice, but the difference is quite substantial. Obviously we've gone from quite a flat design 
to a more ergonomic design here with the grips, so that's much more comfortable in the hand. We've also got our analog triggers compared to digital triggers. So again, that's quite important in a lot of games to have analog over digital. We also have our three and a half millimeter headphone jack, which the G2 does not. So overall, there's no real contest. The G8 is the winner overall for functionality. Now, size-wise, you can see quite a difference here in size and we can compare to the Bluetooth version as well if we wish to. You can see here the difference is quite substantial. And I think if you're going to look at any controllers to purchase in the near future, then obviously go for the G8 over the G2. Right, let's go over the gamepad test now and we can see how well these are working. You can see here, absolutely fine, nice and smooth for both analog sticks. Instant response being that USB-C connectivity. So yeah, you're not going to have any problems whatsoever with the analog sticks here. We can test out the D-pad as well. And again, it feels really nice. It's nice and easy to use. We'll be testing that out in a game later. We've got our start and select buttons here. A, B, X, and Y. We've got our R, B, and L, B. And then we have our analog triggers, which you can see have the analog functionality. Now, quite a cool feature here is that you can actually disable the analog sticks completely. You can have them as digital buttons if you wish. To do that, you just press and hold the M and analog stick for two seconds. And then once you release it, you'll see here, no matter how hard I'm pressing, it is instantly coming on. You can see here, we've still got analog on our L2, if I want to change that as well. Press and hold M and the trigger for two seconds. Once you let go, you have now got digital rather than analog. So to go back to that, you can press again, two seconds and hold and it will turn the analog back on. And we'll do the same on L2. And there we are, we are back. So what if you want to enable turbo function on any of your buttons? Well, you can do that by just pressing and holding M and tapping a button. And you can see now we've now got turbo on A. You can press and hold and tap another button. And we've got turbo on Y as well. Let's turn it off, you just press and tap again, and that turns it back off. Now, you can interchange the X and Y and A and B buttons, so if you're running a Switch emulator, for example, all you do is press and hold M and hold A for three seconds. And you can see now my A has gone to the B button, and my B is A, Y is now X, and X is now Y. So again, to come back out of that, hold it for three seconds, and you'll see it switches back. Okay, so how about setting the mappable buttons here? Well, just select which one you want to assign a button to. So we're gonna do R4 to start with. Press and hold the M key and that button on the back that you want to assign a button to. You'll see here that the white home button starts flashing and then you press whichever button you want to assign. So we're gonna go for A to start with. And now my R4 is mapped to my A button. Okay, so we'll just do the same for the L4 as well. So press and hold the back button and the M button. We can now see the M light flashing over here. So we're gonna press B and now our back mapper button has been mapped to the B button. So to unmap, all you have to do is press and hold the M and the mappable key. So I'm gonna do the R4 to start with. You can see here, over here, we have the flashing white light. I'll now press the mapper button again and it has been deassigned. And again, if we press and hold M and the L4, wait for the button over here to start flashing white, and then we press L4 to unassign the keybind. Okay, so we're happy that all the buttons and things work okay, so how about the GameSet app itself? So the GameSet app is, well, it's an app which allows you to use it to map the device buttons to your screen. So for games like Call of Duty or anything that doesn't support the controller natively, such as Genshin Impact, you can run the game from here and launch it in touch mode. You then press OK here and the game will now launch. So now you can see here, we've got all of the controls on the screen. So these are predefined by someone. Someone has actually gone in and set these up for every game that you can imagine pretty much. And you, it just means you don't have to fiddle around setting up mapping controls yourself. Okay, so now you can see without any configuration or setup at all, I am now running my Genshin Impact here with all the controls mapped on the screen. Now obviously you can move them around and change them as you see fit, but normally the defaults are pretty good once you get used to how they have been configured. So yeah, pretty cool app. It hasn't got the best reviews in the store. I think most of the time people just don't understand how this works and they have problems with it. But yeah, I haven't had any problems with it at all, personally. It just seems to do the job. And when I press the right buttons, that is, I can uh, kill things pretty easily. 
Now there may be times that you don't want to use the built-in controls on the screen. So for example, if you've got something like an emulator which also already supports X input, what we can do is go back into Android mode and by holding the back and start buttons, when the little game say logo turns green, we are back in our X input mode. There we are in a bit of dead cells. You can see here we've got our movement set to the D-pad and yeah, really nice solid results here for the G8. Right, so here we are in some xCloud game streaming. We're playing Pokemon, uh, I mean Power World, and you can see, again, controls working absolutely fine, no problems whatsoever. And I think you can sort of feel the difference with the Hall Effect triggers and analog sticks. They do feel a lot smoother than your typical analog stick. And same with the triggers as well. They just feel nice and smooth when you're playing the game. Right, so here we are with a bit of Xbox Remote Play and we are just going to see how we get on here with Rocket League. Last thing I'm just going to mention is make sure once you have got your controller, just make sure you update the firmware. You can see here I updated mine to version 55.1.4 and that added the ability to charge at faster speed. 15 watts has gone up to 27 watts. It's also fixed some trigger issues, resolved some other problems and it's just worth keeping your controller up to date. Right, so that is the GameSir G8 controller and as I'm sure you'll agree, it's a great controller with some nice features the removable plates to change your analog sticks if you so wish is a really nice idea. And the fact you can play any game with the GameSet app, not the best app in the world, but it does work with these pre-installed mappings for your various different games. So yeah, really nice controller, not the most expensive either. So compared to the Kishi, for example, it is a lot cheaper. Don't forget you've got the USB charging and the three and a half millimeter headphone port as well, so that you can listen to your games in peace whilst charging your phone. So if you have any questions or comments, please do leave them down below. I have put an affiliate link if you want to pick one of these up and support the channel. Hopefully this was useful. If it was, please do like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.